Hey everyone, this is Carrie from Any Day Blessings. Today it's going to be sort of a vlog style video. I'm gonna be working in my kitchen while I'm sharing with you my top 10 fun ideas for our back to home school week and really even the week before we start back to school. Now, I have so much going on, like all of you getting ready to start back up into our school year. I don't have time to sit down and just like plan a video. So I'm just finishing up breakfast here. We had pancakes. I'm gonna wrap these up and talk to you and put things away and start to clean up a little bit. So that's how <laughs> that's how this video is gonna go. I really wanted to share this with you because I know some of you have already started. Maybe you could use some of these tips to like bring excitement and fun into your week if you're <laughs> having a, a rough start. But I didn't want to delay until I had time to sit down and make this video. So I'm just gonna do it. You know, I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna do it while I clean up my kitchen after breakfast this morning. You're gonna hear uh, some imaginative play and songs probably from the next room. My little girl is over there playing with her LOL dolls and she's having fun doing that. And you might even hear my little guy come in and tell me about the latest Hot Wheels matchup winner because he is doing his car races. So, um, we are starting school in two weeks, two weeks from yesterday. And I have just kind of a list of things that I kind of just um, keep on um, tap, you know, like a, in a Google list. And I just do pull things out from that list. You know, I don't necessarily do all of these things every, you know, first week back to school. These are just things that um, I do either the first week of school or the first week back after that Christmas break because we take a, a three week break. And sometimes we need a fun startup week at the um, beginning of January when we start back to school. So these aren't things that I do. I don't do all of these things per se, but these are things that I have done or I'm planning to do. Um, and uh, thought maybe you might like to try them in your home. Um, all but one, I think, are free. So these aren't like going out and buying things. These are just ideas you can do in your home. Here, I'm gonna move over here because I gotta put these in the fridge. Okay, so. Um, idea number one, I like to have an orientation week. I like to try and do, um, and not even a week, maybe just like a day or two, um, before school starts. So we'll probably do this next week a day and I will take out and I'll do a curriculum reveal. I'll lay all of my kids' books out on the coffee table and we'll go over all of their different uh, materials that they're going to be using. I will show them the homeschool routine that I've come up with and allow them to have some feedback if they would like, you know, to maybe switch some things up. I do kind of um, keep it pretty much under, um, I don't want to say control, that sounds bad. I, I, I really do try and structure it a certain way because even though they might think they want to do math less because they don't like it, I know that they're not going to have any, like, get up and go and energy left and we're going to have math meltdowns. So, like, I will say, well, we can maybe do it towards the end, but we're not going to make it our very last thing. So we have an orientation time and I will be putting that either on my Insta stories or here on YouTube and I will show you my kids' reactions to seeing all their books and I'll show you how I do that kind of orientation time. I also walk them through our home and show them the changes I've made. Let me show you one of them right now. I actually uh, made a video about the top um, four things or must do things that you should do before starting back to school. and. One of the things I talked about was kind of looking around your home and finding ways that you could make things flow easier throughout the school year. So one thing I did was I cleared out a shelf down there on the bottom of my pantry and I'm starting to put our arts and crafts supplies there. I'm not quite all the way done yet, but um, I had a drawer just on the other side of this cupboard that had our arts and crafts supplies, but I had the rest of them downstairs. And so I was constantly running downstairs and trying to, uh, keep my kids here engaged at the counter, which is just right on the other side here, and they would totally lose focus while I was running downstairs. So I moved that stuff up here with the hopes of having all our arts and crafts supplies in one spot, right where my kids will actually use them. So I will show them that. I'll walk them around and show them all the things I've done. They've already seen this, but this is our little, um, gonna be our reading chart. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I did, um, the 40 book challenge last year and we stacked up all the books that we read. I took that down, it was kind of sad. I didn't want to do that, but um, this chart uses these little thing buttons. I just have a little container of them stacked inside here and every time he finishes a book, he will put it on the bottom half of this door right under 
Reading is the thing and our goal is to use up all of our thing buttons and there are 30 of them. So our goal for this year is 30 books. And the reason I did that is because looking over the books, they are longer. They, um, there was quite a jump in um, the difficulty of vocabulary and a reduction of pictures. So I um, reduced the book quantity to 30. So there are 30 thing buttons and we will put those up there. I'll show that to my son. I'll show him where his school books are going to be stored and I will show him his assignment book. That's something brand new for this year. So all that's gonna happen in our orientation week. I'm not gonna talk about that too much more because I'm gonna do a whole video on that. But I do take time to kind of um, show them all the new and fun things. I'll also give them, and this is my tip number two um, for back to school, presents. I will give them one present that's for both of them. And I'm not gonna say what it is because she's listening over there. But um, I will give my kids um, some presents uh, for back to school. One that is together, something that they could both use. And then one, I'll give that one probably during that orientation time, uh, the week before school. But then I'll give them each a gift on the first day of school that's just for them. So um, I have one for my son and one for my daughter. And those are both from Timberdoodle. And I'll show you those um, probably during that first day of school vlog that I do. All right, so the first tip to make uh, back to school fun would be to have like that orientation time. Do a curriculum reveal. Show them around where you've um, moved things and all the different fun ways that you plan to use your home to learn this year. The second tip, gifts. They just go a long way. All right, the third tip, or the third thing, I'm sorry, I have a list here as I'm looking here. Um, the third thing I would suggest is to reduce their chores for the week, okay? So during that first week back to school, um, give them a break on making their bed or unloading the dishwasher like I'm doing right now. Give them a break on some of those things because, um, you know, they're taking on a whole new workload, you know, and so maybe lightening the workload and gradually bringing those chores back in over the following weeks might be um, uh, a way to kind of uh, uh, encourage cooperation with back to school. All right, uh, tip number four, I think I'm on. I would, um, one thing that I'm planning to do this year, I kind of did it last year a little bit, but not like in a formal way. I think I'm gonna, am I gonna go on a range? No, okay. Um, I didn't really do it in a formal way. I didn't make these cards, but it's a skip it and double cards. So I'm just gonna make these on little index cards. And I'll put it on my Instagram um, and probably on the blog when I make them. But there are certain things <laughs> that my son just does not enjoy doing and other things that he loves and he really wants to do more of. So I'm going to make on index cards five skip it cards and five double cards. And so I'm gonna make a skip it math, skip it language arts, skip it handwriting, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make five cards and I'm gonna tie a subject to them. And then I'm gonna do the same on, on the other hand, double science, double math, double what, you know. And he gets to pick what he wants to double and what he wants to skip. So he might say, well, maybe I won't put the subjects. I won't put the subjects on the double cards. I'll just put the subjects on the skip cards because what I don't want is him to skip math five days in a row. So I'm going to give him a skip it card and I'm going to say, okay, buddy, um, you get a skip it card every day this week. And when you get to an assignment, if you don't want to do it and, and you just feel like, oh, I already know this, I don't want to do this, just slap that skip it card down and say skip it and we don't have to do that assignment. I'm only gonna do that for the first week of school, mainly because all of those beginning assignments are review anyway, aren't they? I mean, they're all kind of review. And we can skip one lesson per five subjects for the first week of school and be just fine. So I'm gonna give him those skip it cards and see how that works, but then I'm also gonna give him double cards because I know during science class, he's gonna to wanna to do double science. And I have a feeling with our new language lessons book from Masterbooks, he's gonna to wanna to double those too. All right, so uh, skip it and double cards. Tip number five, go on location. Go on location. My kids love packing their book bags. They love packing their lunch boxes. They don't get to do that very often. And so we will, during the first week of school, at least once or twice, go on location. To a park, to Nana's house, even the backyard. But we will just pack everything up, pack a, pack a snack or pack a lunch, and go on location during the first week of school. Now, we don't do it every day, and um, like I said, I mean, we won't do all of these things on the first day or even all in the first week, but these are just ideas of things that maybe you could pull in, things you hadn't uh, thought of, and um, uh, hopefully, you know, starting to get the juices flowing, even for ways you could 
you know, tweak these ideas to fit your home. Okay, the next idea. This works awesome. And I actually do this all throughout the year, but especially when I need to kind of re-energize, get, get um, cooperation uh, flowing again. Grab bag schedule is what I call it. And sometimes I put this, <laughs> he's a little uh, musician back there. Um, sometimes I'll put these in his hat. Sometimes I'll put them in a, in a bag. Sometimes I'll put them, you know, in a toy and he has to fish them out. Little tiny cards with the names of the subjects, science, math, handwriting, health, reading, whatever. Just a little index cards. Then put them in a hat, a bag, a bowl, whatever. And as they pull them out, that's how they do them. He loves it. He never knows what's coming next. It's a surprise. And it's a fun way to get through all of that school list with um, really giving them the autonomy to choose, but allowing that surprise element too. My son absolutely love, love, loves it. We've probably done that the last two years. And um, like I said, I do it even when it's not back to school week. We do it all year long. Okay. Sorry, I had to open up the drawer. Um, maybe I'll move this down a little because I'm going to be doing this bottom rack here. Um, next thing. Okay, everyone talks about fun breakfasts on the first morning of school, and that's great. I think those are fun, but I take it up a notch a little bit because I, I really think that getting the kids actually cooking on that first day is a great way to increase excitement. What kid doesn't love to cook? I mean, I guess there are some. There are some kids that probably don't like it, but my kids love to cook. And so we um, we will actually make breakfast together and actually go through um, you know where the recipe came from. I'll, I'll pick an old family recipe, like my mother's um, breakfast casseroles or my grandmother's sweet rolls or my grandmother's homemade donuts, something like that. And we will actually go through and talk about what it was like when mommy made this with grandma when she was a little girl and all the special memories. It really makes for a special time. And you know, and we're cooking and they're, they're learning those kind of skills and we're, we're sharing a memory together. It's just a great time, you guys. It's a great way to start off our back to school because um, they're taking part in that special first breakfast. I love it. I love cooking with my kids anyway. But that first morning back to school, it just kind of really sets the day off for a positive tone to start the morning cooking together. Now, if that is a stressful thing for you, if cooking with your kids never ends well, everybody's, you know, in bad sorts afterwards, then, then maybe cook lunch together instead. But I, I would highly suggest finding an old family recipe or something that you can share a, a memory or something meaningful like that with your kids um, it just makes for an incredibly special time. Okay, um, I like to have back to school backwards day. It's back to school, we're gonna go backwards. So we dress backwards, clothes are on backwards, we do our school list backwards, so I show them the schedule and say, hey, guess what, we're gonna do the schedule backwards. They think that's hilarious. And so I know some of these things work better for elementary kids, your high schooler or middle schooler may not think a lot of these things are all that great but um, I have elementary kids so <laughs> these are the kinds of things we do we go backwards uh, the kids even sometimes when we change location in um, <clears throat> in the home because we don't do everything at the kitchen counter some things we're in the living room some things we're in the uh, family room so we just you know we move all over the house and um, they'll even sometimes walk backwards in the house trying to get from place to place um, backwards. So, I don't know, I don't really like that part. <laughs> but we dress backwards and we do the schedule backwards and they think it's hilarious. Um, and the last thing, my last suggestion, number 10, I would suggest having a spirit week. A spirit week. Now, this could be for Again, any time in the year when you need to encourage, you know, excitement and cooperation and get people excited to go back to school or, you know, this could be a mid-year thing, excuse me, a mid-year thing, this could be, um, you know, you could even just do like maybe a spirit month and do one of, one of these special days um, each week in the month, 
but this is the kinds of things that we do for Spirit Week. We will um, have Crazy Hair Day. We will have Mismatch Day. We will have a Superhero Princess Day or Dress Up, you know, Character Dress Up Day. And they'll do school dressed as Wonder Woman or um, Snow White or The Flash or a Transformer. Um, we will do Team Spirit Day and we will dress in our uh, team's favorite colors. Um, my son will wear his little league outfit or, you know, whatever. Um, we can, what was one of the other days we did? I think we did, I think I said crazy hair, right? We did something else crazy, maybe crazy, oh, I don't know what we did. But we, we've done all sorts of different like spirit week days. That first week to school, usually we do it the first week back after, <laughs> after Christmas because nobody wants to go back after Christmas break. So a lot of times we will do the spirit week, um, the week that we choose to start back to school after um, Christmas. So those are my ideas. I hope it wasn't too distracting me trying to do a little work here while I do this. I'm sure I've gone out of, out of screen a couple times, but I know a lot of people are looking for ways to make the homeschool um, year start off in a fun way, but more than anything, um, is, instead of trying to make it fun and, and exciting uh, for your kids, just look to enjoy them. Just look to really um, be there in the moment because these kinds of special days are fleeting. And you know, before you know it, they'll be in middle school and high school and not wanna make a breakfast with you. I hope not, but it happens to a lot of people. <laughs> Um, they won't want to dress up as certain things. They won't want to do all of this. And so instead of just, instead of like looking at all of like the hands-on activities and things you can buy, I really think that they enjoy so much more um, uh, just sharing moments with you. So I hope these were helpful and I hope that uh, you can take a couple of these ideas and add them to your little list uh, of, of ideas. Um, I will say that um, I haven't tried every single one of these yet. I will be trying a lot of them, or I will be trying some of them this year. Most of them I have tried, but um, that skip it double card is a new thing. So I will let you know how that goes. Let me know in the comments below maybe some other things um, that you do to make the first day or week special in your homeschool, and I will catch you in the next video, everyone. Bye-bye.